Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week, Stork and inventor Steve Rowe guides us through all the latest carcass prep gear from Napier and its application in the field. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. I don't know if it's just a throwback to my youth, having grown up in New Zealand in magical countryside uh, with a phenomenal amount of different species of deer to stalk. Um, I just always get a buzz out of it, you know, regardless of how many times I've been on the same patch. It's always different every time you go out. You don't know what you're going to walk around the corner and walk into. It's a bit like fishing, I suppose, in some respects. The last cast is always the one that might just give you the result. So uh, I'm always out until last light because you just never know what's going to be around that corner. I've had a passion for stalking for all my life basically and having now uh, developed products within Napier uh, I've got the chance to get involved in making things that we can actually use so that's become magical for me so we stalk pretty well everything really uh, locally muntjac, fallow and roe deer but obviously if I get the opportunity uh, reds and seeker. My favourite to eat is actually uh, young muntjac. I think without doubt it's the nicest meat there is. Second only seeker and I think out of all the animals to stalk I think the most majestic and the most um, haunting is the seeker anyway. I, I, I think they're just a magical creature to, to hunt. They're so elusive, very difficult to stalk. Uh, there's something a little bit special about them. And it also happens to be the first large animal I did shoot uh, when I was in New Zealand actually, uh, 1967, my first seeker, so there's been a few since. We do shoot fallow near home, we don't have a huge population of fallow and because of the very nature of the animals they're very transient anyway, so they could be on our patch one day and they could be 20 miles away the next. Um, but we do have a few each year and uh, we've had a few reasonable bucks. They're probably twice as difficult as stalking a muntjac or a roe deer. You know, there's a lot of them. They've got a lot of eyes, a lot of ears, and there's only one of me. And because they're not territorial, you can't sort of stake out their home patch, as it were. They tend to be wherever you expect them not to be. I do use Swarovski binoculars. That's been my favourite. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the model with the rangefinder on it. I do have a rangefinder separately, but because it's separate, I often don't bother to carry it, and uh, sometimes that can be an inconvenience, but at the moment, I can't justify having two. Oh, thermal imaging. Um, I've been using the FLIR for about two years now. Um, I'll be, I must admit, it was a bit of an extravagance, I thought, originally when I bought it, but I must say it saved me a huge amount of time. Um, obviously, for identifying animals in cover, quite handy in the first instance, but particularly good when you shot something at last light. And if you haven't got a dog with you, you can find a carcass very much more easily by the heat uh, trace that it gives off. Really, really useful for that. Um, obviously, you can't detect sex or species, but you can detect whether there's a deer there or not. You're a member of um, a couple of clay clubs, and uh, I do clay shooting as a leisure activity, not as much as I used to do. Uh, because there's a limited amount of time for all these things I'm trying to cram in and run a business as well. But I do enjoy clay shooting. Uh, I'm a member of a little syndicate for uh, a small pheasant shoot locally, so we do our own capering on that. That gives you a chance to do everything that's involved in it. So, uh, yeah, all rounded, really. I do enjoy that. I also shoot air rifles and enjoy taking out the occasional rat. Stalking without doubt is my biggest uh, passion. Yeah, I mean, if I, if I had to get rid of anything else in the world, that'd be the last thing I would give up. And as long as I've got the ability to walk around, I hope I'll be doing this.
Well, the ready sled's actually quite an important bit of kit because there are times when you can't get a vehicle directly to where you dropped an animal and it might not be very far, but that can sometimes be really difficult to get out of if it's a heavy beast. Now the ready sled just goes over your shoulder, it weighs two kilos, it's, uh, it's flexible so you don't hardly know you've got it on. And if you drag it with you, you can take it while you're stalking or you can pick it up from the vehicle when you're going to pick up the animal. The principle of it is that instead of pulling a sled or a drag bag, you're actually pulling the animal. The animal has got a steel noose around its shoulders and around its neck that then protrudes through two big eyelets on the front of the sled. The sled itself then is pulled up around the animal like a banana leaf basically and you're actually pulling the animal not the sled. Right. Now the bag that it came in is also a webbing waist strap, very important part of the kit. So that is then attached to the D-rings, placed around your waist or over your shoulder, whichever way you want to do it. It leaves both your hands free to carry your kit, your rifle, your sticks and everything else and to walk purposefully and get that animal out of that uh, location with a minimum of fuss and it can glide over pretty well most any ground because the runners are made of EVA and they're quite supple. And as it pulls up, the front goes up and pulls together like a boat would do. So it can go over almost any obstacle. Obviously there are limitations with it and you should take care when you're going downhill not to let the thing drag you out of control, but to get in and out of difficult briar patches or rocky areas or slopes or mud where you can't get a vehicle, it's really useful indeed to get it back to the car then you can obviously grallic in the normal way or whatever. Uh, obviously, if you can grallic the animal on the spot, remove the heads and legs, you've just reduced a lot of weight, and that makes it even easier to drag out. But at least when you're dragging the animal, you're with an open uh, carcass like that, you're not likely to get contamination and soil inside the body cavity, which is what it's all about, because after all, it is food at this stage, and you can then get it back to the larder as clean as possible. Right, this is the new tree hugger, which is a pouch that contains two S-hooks, the cross-weave webbing which self-grips, and two pairs of gloves. Sits on your belt or goes in your pocket. With that you can grallic and suspend any animal on any tree, as long as it's vertical, and all trees are vertical anyway, uh, right up from a muntjac as this is, or up as far as a fallow or anything else, bearing in mind that these are quite capable of holding 250 to 300 kilos. It wraps around uh, in a specific way and the two D-rings are then applied through the back end of the strap. The minute the pressure goes on it, the cross-weave webbing locks and those D-rings stay where they are and it actually gives you a gambrel shaped uh, angle to put your S-hooks on which come as part of the kit. Now for a fallow you wouldn't be lifting it up on your own, we have an auto lift for that. But for muntjac and for row, perfectly easy to get them on, if they're a little bit heavier, hook them on one leg at a time. The other big advantage, apart from grallicking it that way, it makes it so much cleaner and easier. When you then have to go and get the vehicle later on, which may not necessarily be very close, and if it's on last light and you're looking for the tree in the dark, it's the tree with the big orange cross on it. Regardless of which angle you approach it from, you'll find that much more easily than hunting around and wondering where you left your deer. The benefits of a suspended grallic are obvious. We know that uh, it's now the preferred method. It means you get a cleaner carcass you make sure that there's no pluck, no green pluck, no contamination on the carcass, either from the ground or from the animal itself, because as when you open it up, everything falls outwards and downwards. So right from bleeding the animal all the way through to removing the final part of your pluck, the whole thing's clean and green. And it's also, of course, cooling nicely, and it's totally suspended so that you've got everything being drained out. There should be virtually nothing in the blood box when we put this animal in the car. Right, well now we've got our animal either back to the vehicle or we've got it to a suitable location so we can use it with the tree hugger. Without doubt the best type of uh, grallic is suspended. Of course it's much cleaner, uh, much more hygienic, less chance of contamination and easier on the back and safer for the hunter. Um, but of course not always possible unless you can get the animal in the air. Now with a muntjac and a, and, a, and a roe deer it's very easy, you can lift them up quite simply with one person. Fallow deer, red deer, seeker deer, different story of course, you can't do that always if you're on your own, sometimes it's quite a struggle. Uh, now we just invented a new product called the auto lift and the whole idea of that is that one person can easily, very easily, ratchet up a very heavy animal on their own, either into a vehicle, onto a hook or up into a tree absolutely one-handed because this device can lift 200 kilos very easily uh, which will accommodate any animal that we've got in the UK and quite a few of the larger animals outside of the UK such as wild boar. 
the principle is it's a self-retracting type of strap. It comes with a, uh, a compact gambrel, which is in two parts, so it sits very neatly in the pocket. And the whole thing, by the way, fits into the pocket of a Predator or a waste bag or whatever you want to carry it with, so it can be with you at all times. You then pull out the retractable strap, attach the gambrel to the animal's hocks, take up the slack and just ratchet it up with one hand and you can put a 150 kilo animal up in the air on your own very easily indeed. If you use it with the auto click, which is on the back of the uh, SUV, obviously the animal's hanging on the back of the car while you're gralicking it. When you've finished, you don't have to drag it down, put it on the ground and struggle to get it into the blood box because if you then put the shoulders and the front legs into your blood box before you release the hook, by putting your hand on the animal and pressing forwards, as you release it, it automatically falls into the car, into the blood box and not on the floor. Um, so it really, you really can handle the fallow on your own. The Airglow is a very, very simple product. It's been around for years in many forms. So obviously the um, principle of checking the air direction is pretty fundamental when you're stalking you know fully well that what's happening up at the clouds is not what's happening at ground level. Very rarely it is. In some ways, the wind can be going in completely the opposite direction. As everybody probably knows, but maybe didn't know the details, a human exhales 10,000 litres of air every single day, and every molecule of that is filled up with human scent. So no matter how much camouflage you're wearing and how good you are at everything else, if the wind's in the wrong direction, you really aren't going to stalk and you're not going to shoot very much. Now, it's easy to use uh, because obviously we tried to design it so that people are happy to use it throughout the whole of the stalk. And then what we've done is we've put it into a baton shaped bottle. So it handles very easily and it is actually supplied with a neoprene sleeve in Realtree AP. So it can hang around your neck on its little lanyard or there's a, a belt clip on it as well. So you can have no excuses for not puffing every few yards if it needs to be done when you're on the final approaches to a stalk. And very often, that's when the wind can change absolutely without notice and you suddenly wonder why their head's up and gone. One other big advantage is it can be used as a trail marker. The powder is not water soluble. So when you put a cross on the ground where you've taken the shot from, you can always go back to that position to retrace your steps when you're trying to find a carcass. But it's a natural product, it's quite harmless, it's odorless and it's completely non-toxic and after a few days, it will disperse naturally. Steve there showing us some interesting stalking innovations. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Britain's Olympic shooting team for next year has been picked, and there are no surprises. Everyone who won a quota place has been selected. That's Amber Hill, Steve Scott, Elena Allen, Ed Ling, Tim Neal and Jen McIntosh. We caught up with Amber at an exclusive event at EJ Churchill to find out how her preparation for Rio was going. I think Rio is the big one, but I was using sort of these multi-sport events as a learning sort of thing and going to Glasgow I did learn a lot. It didn't work out exactly how I would have liked, but I did learn so much and I think you learn from your bad days as well. So everything I learned from Glasgow I then put into Baku and I came away with a gold and I think again I've just learned so much and gained so much experience within the couple of years and I love this multi-sport event and the environment now because it is completely different to the competitions. They're still big scale but as soon as you get to the multi-sport event there's just a completely different environment and I think getting the build up along with the other sports and the other athletes is just a really nice thing too. I think I'm starting to get used to them now and it, I think it's definitely helping my performance just getting the experience and understanding what it's like and knowing that you can't sort of always do the exact same thing as you do in other competitions you have to take whatever's thrown at you and just take it for what it is yeah. and I think I'm slowly getting more experience and getting better at it and also with my cartridge sponsors Ely cartridges been the support I've got from them has been incredible and even my my local grounds EJ Churchill's where I train have been fantastic the facilities that I've been given to use to train have been so important to my success I think and just the support from everyone really and my family and friends has really made the difference to me getting through those tough times and I'm very fortunate that I've had that. Of course. Tickets are now on sale for the UK Game Fair. 
Taking place at Stoneleigh next July, the fair has put value for money first, with an advanced adult ticket costing £17.50. The UK Game Fair is the new flagship event for field sports and promises to put shooting, fishing, gun dogs, hunting and estate management back at the heart of the show. Find out more at ukgamefair.com. Shooters are being urged to hold fire on Woodcock until late November in an effort to protect Britain's dwindling numbers of resident breeding birds. By then our own Woodcock will have migrated south to be replaced by a massive annual influx of birds from Scandinavia, the Baltics and Russia. SGA chairman Alex Hogg said this voluntary delay was the best way to avoid a forced change of season dates. Find out more in the December issue of iShoot magazine, out next week. The government is cutting spending on the environment, and Basque said it's time to double down our conservation efforts. DEFRA has been told it'll take a 30% cut. The UK's leading shooting organisation said this emphasised the need for shooters to continue improving habitat and encouraging wildlife. Basque's Alan Jarrett said we've never shirked from our role as guardians of the countryside, but now it's more important than ever. And finally, there's been a landmark U-turn on buzzards. Gamekeeper Ricky McMahon will now be granted a buzzard control licence after the High Court overturned Natural England's decision of earlier this year to refuse one. The NGO, who backed Mr McMahon all the way, said it was a sign of fairness in wild bird licensing. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>